All right, here we are again for another live class. I do these every two weeks and I've been doing this for, boy, I would say um, since January, where every two weeks I come live and I share with you guys that all the things that I'm passionate about on health and wellness topics. So some of the things that I have shared with you guys in the past with my courses would be uh, sugar reduction, strategies on how to reduce stress, sleep strategies, um, gut health, hormone health, what else? Um, Self-sabotaging, ways that we sabotage our success and our health, um, lab testing. So I have so many classes that I have been um, making for you guys on a regular basis. And if anything, you if you're getting to know me through my Instagram, you know I'm passionate about health and wellness. So I'm just waiting for a couple of people. And yes, awesome. Hi, Amy. Hi, Katie. Uh, you guys can probably tell I'm in my car today. Uh, we were having internet issues at my house and the dogs were really loud today. So I'm like, I'm going to my car. It's kind of zen. No one can bother me. And it's actually really nice outside with some sunshine. So I just thought I'm going to try and change it up. But thanks for joining me. We are going to just keep moving along because I know people join in when they can and people bop on and off because let's face it, it's life. But tonight's class is on five tips that I tell my patients to jumpstart their health because let's face it, there's so many different topics, so many different strategies, but these are the top five that I find to be very effective for the effort put in, okay? And so um, the first one, if you guys know me well, it's actually not me suggesting magnesium, which is one of the very top things that I um, share with my patients a lot. The very first thing that I'm going to suggest for jumpstarting your health, hands down, sugar reduction. And I think a lot of you might know that I'm very passionate about this topic because it's one of the things that I had to do to heal myself from a autoimmune disease, multiple sclerosis, and this was years and years ago, that it, I was dealing with symptoms, um, I was sick, I wasn't doing well, um, got the diagnosis, freaked out, didn't know what to do, and changed all sorts of diet situations, but I didn't give up sugar for a while, because <laughs> sugar's hard to give up. And I didn't put the puzzle pieces together until just, you know, more research and diving into what it means for health and healing that when I finally cut out sugar, go figure, my symptoms started to go away. Okay. And that's because for me, I was completely and utterly addicted to sugar. I'm not kidding. I, I went out of my way. I could, I could just pound on sugar all day long. It was my way of coping made me feel good and yeah it made sense that it was inflaming my system okay so my number one tip for jump-starting your health would be reducing sugar and if you can do that you will definitely feel huge huge results okay so here's some strategies on how to reduce sugar the 80 20 rule this one I, pra I practice currently but when I had to heal it was more, ah! <laughs> whoops, <laughs> the luxury of being in your car. Um, when, I, when I was having to heal um, from MS, uh, it was more of a 90-10 rule. Sometimes 100% of, of the time, I was avoiding white processed sugar, okay? Not necessarily fruits, um, but for me, it was all the you know, cookies and brownies and all the like ice creams. And the, probably the biggest culprit for me was the um, caribou caramel coolers, which had a ton of sugar and I was consuming those every day, sometimes multiple times a day. Um, but so for some people, it's really hard to cut sugar. So the 80-20 rule is a way to where you can still have your cake and eat it too. However, um, you have to be very diligent on 80% of the time just really trying to eat healthy and avoid the things that you just know are not good for you. And then you save that 20% of the time for 
the birthday parties and the you know weekend barbecues that you're going to get together with or the girlfriends want to go out for you know maybe donuts or something um so we see that we are in a society where we love sugar and how do we celebrate it by having it in plethora everywhere we go right um, you can't not show up to church without donuts there. You can't not show up to even the teacher's lounge when I was teaching full time. Donuts and cookies. Um, you can't not show up to a birthday party without sugar being everywhere, right? So it is in our society and we can't get away from it. So you have to find strategies where you're still enjoying the moments, but you're not being, you know, socially awkward and you're, and you're like, ah, I can't have that with grandma's 90th birthday and you know she's I can't have that cake so basically you get my point the 80 20 rule is very effective for reducing sugar okay now I tell people that if they have to heal from an autoimmune disease probably you want to try to go 90 10 100 percent for a few months some people they have to go six months to a year because they're very sick okay another tip keep it within guidelines Women, we're supposed to have 25 grams of added sugar a day. That's, that's what we're given. That's what the American Heart Association even says, that we can only have 25 added sh grams of added sugar. So that's, for example, if you're going to have some yogurt. And if you looked at the back of a yogurt package, you would see, based on the brand, um, most commonly it's going to be like 24 grams of added sugar for some of the very popular yogurts um, granola bars same thing if you look added sugars maybe like 12 to 16 grams so I'm just saying it's in plethora everywhere and so the more you start to realize how sugar is put into everything to make it taste good and keep us addicted um, you'll quickly understand why it's such a problem for us I'm getting shadow okay here we go um, so women 25 grams men 37 grams and kids 12 grams and I have to just say something here because think about your kiddos when they're going to a birthday party or let's just say um, they're in sports and there's a celebration after um, they win a game and you go get ice cream um, or you go to get a big cookie at like crumble cookie and this is just kind of a recurring thing where those items are not 12 grams of added sugar. They are adult portions. And often the kids are getting adult portions times two or three. Um, I have a situation where in my son's um, ki kindergarten class one year, it was the week before Christmas, and we had all these birthdays that the kids had to celebrate every single day, right? Because there would be birthdays over... Christmas break and then there would be summer birthdays and so my son was one of them that had a summer birthday so what did they do they celebrated them in the winter well this is the week before Christmas and you have Monday Jimmy's birthday party Tuesday Anna's birthday party Wednesday Isaac's birthday party <laughs> you get the point right and then Friday we had to celebrate Jesus birthday right because Jesus's birthday was coming up for Christmas and it's just you don't understand these things are happening until it's just like, whoa, overload. And then the kiddos start getting sick. Okay. So keep that in mind. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. It's so bright. <laughs> so here we go. Um, the other thing you can do for sugar reduction would be swapping out sugar um, items. So let's just say instead of putting like chocolate chips on um, like... I don't know, brownies, maybe put raspberries or strawberries, something that's a healthier sugar alternative. Um, another one would be swapping out, um, they're making healthier sugar alternatives like chocolate chips or um, they're making keto brownie mixes. And you'll see these on the shelf when they say keto. For the most part, it's a healthier sugar. And if you want to learn more about that, I have my sugar class that I taught a couple months ago. And so stevia or monk fruit would be healthier sugar alternatives. And so when I'm looking for a treat for my family, which we don't do a ton of it, 
But when we want to have like chocolate chip cookies that I want to make from scratch, I'm going to buy the Lily's chocolate chips because they're stevia sweetened. Okay. And then the next tip would be the lessers, lesser of the evils. And this is going to be kind of one of those things where, um, you know, let's just say you're going to a Sunday, Sunday bar or like, a, you know, a, a birthday party. And it's where, what can you choose that's going to be the lesser of the evils where you're still participating, but yet not going to inflame your system and make you sick. So I was at a, um, a party that had a yogurt bar. And so I chose to still enjoy some of the yogurt in small moderation, but there was tons and tons of berries and strawberries and blueberries. And so that's what I put mostly on my yogurt versus the other toppings, which would have been like granola, which is really high in added sugar um, or any, or there was, you know, other, you know, like there was orange juice. And so I wouldn't have drank the orange juice. I would have just chose water. Okay. So there's just things that you can be mindful of when you are at these events that you, you see sugar and you can either have it all and pay for it or you can have some and be like okay I got this or you just avoid it because you know maybe you're in a really big healing moment for your disease and you just don't want to um, set yourself back a few weeks okay and then the next one would be make it yourself um, this is a, a, a strategy that I've had to do over and over and over when let's just say you want to make dessert um, and you're invited to something and they tell you to bring the dessert or you know you're gonna come and there's not gonna be good desserts so you just say hey I'm gonna bring the dessert and nobody's gonna know it's healthy and I've done this a lot of times where I'll um, make you know an alternative uh, chocolate chip cookie and no one knows no one knows it has the healthier alternative sugars of like monk fruit um, or you can even make it with way less sugar um, a lot of people don't know um, even in Europe if you've ever traveled Europe um, their, the amount of sugar that they put in their pastries is vastly different than the amount of sugar we put in the United States. I think, the, I think they say something about like one third the amount of sugar is in the European pastries compared to the full amount here. So these are just ideas um, when it comes to sugar reduction. And there's just, there's so many good tips, but the point is awareness and the more you're aware the more you're going to want to do the right thing, okay? So with sugar, why is it a big deal, right? Everyone's addicted. 75% of Americans eat excess amounts of sugar, and definitely most of us can be classified as having a sugar addiction. Um, it accelerates your aging process. It Your brain kind of gets um, reliant on it. It's like a high, so it is almost like a drug. Um, most Americans eat 152 pounds of sugar a year, 126 grams a day. Remember when I said it's only you should only get like 24 grams a day if you're a woman? Most people are on averaging 126, okay? So you can understand why that's my number one tip. If you could just even work on that, your health will improve tenfold. And I'm not kidding. I'm not making this up. I'm speaking from experience and I'm also speaking from my patients' experiences. When they cut sugar, holy cow, like right there, that alone, like I, I could almost end the class right now, okay? But sugar is huge. And then this is the other thing. When I cut sugar, I stopped getting sick. And it's been like, whoa, what? Even when I got COVID, I was sick for one day and I only had symptoms for one day. Um, and I, I really, really attribute that to not eating copious amounts of sugar. Um, granted, too, I had lots of other supplements and things that I took, but I hardly ever get sick. And like I said, if I do, it's like for one day, okay? And so if you have 100 grams of sugar, it suppresses your white blood cell function by 40% for five hours. So it's no wonder people can get really sick around the holidays, right? <laughs> it's kind of like the perfect storm. You have all the the sugar and the the cold weather change and then you're you're entering into the the dark season um where you're kind of depleted of your vitamin d so it's no wonder people get really sick um it's like it's like classic the week after halloween that first week of november where the weather changes um you know it's dark 
and then you have like all that candy, right? <laughs> and then you're already full swing, uh, full swing into like the holiday season. So you've added stress. So that is when people get sick. Okay. So you can do a couple other things where you like, I quit sugar challenge. And I talk about this in one of my other classes, um, on, um, sugar reduction. It's a really good class. And I'm going to show you a, a graphic for that a little bit later, but ways to start. You cut sugary beverages, eat more protein. You can swap alternatives for sugar, fruit versus sweets. Um, eat healthy fats that actually keeps you satisfied so you don't need to be like craving other foods um, eat clean foods cut down on simple carbs and that's another really key fact if you're eating a lot of simple carbohydrates it's going to spike your blood sugar and then you go high and then you crash and then your body wants more sugar to kind of wake up again um, speaking of getting more sleep if you don't get enough sleep on average the next day, you will crave about 500 more calories because your body is trying to stay awake. And guess what people mostly crave? Sugary items, okay? And then, of course, exercise reduces cravings. I feel like a lot of people have um, experienced this themselves where they start exercising and they just they want to start eating healthier no matter what. Okay, next one. So five steps. You can quit cold turkey. You can swap foods, substitute ingredients, um, simplify breakfast. I didn't talk about this, but that's hands down. Most of the time where people start their day is with something sugary. If you can stop that, holy cow, right? We have the muffins, we have pancakes, we have waffles, we have the yogurts that are high in sugar. What else? Donuts. Um, we have the, the coffee that people will start off with. That's like the Frappuccinos. Um, what else am I missing? Cereal. <laughs> Cereal. Oof. I'm going to get to that. Okay. But simply swapping your breakfast for a healthier alternative that's a protein or a fat um, or, you know, a healthier com complex carb. Um, like I, I really like the, the thicker, denser, um, like sprouted sourdough breads. Um you can get away with quinoa. You can get away with whole sprouted oats, but make sure that you have protein with it, right? Because you don't want to be spiking the blood sugar. And then switch your thinking, right? You just, like I said, you have to kind of just go around just watching your day and just seeing how much sugar we are exposed to. So it's almost like we are set up to fail and we don't want to fail, right? So we just have to have to do a mind switch here, okay? And then guess what? You get to start over every day when it comes to your health. You can start clean and never give up on yourself, right? It's all about habits, all about setting goals. Um, I have another class where I talk about self-sabotage and why we do things that knock us off our course. And definitely recommend watching that if you can on how do I stop being my own, you know, roadblock, right? So there's all sorts of things that are good strategies to kind of get over how to not fail, okay? All right, number two, the number two tip that I have on um, jumpstarting your health is avoiding genetically modified foods. See, this is another one that you can just make the swap. People think it's actually more expensive to do this, but it is not actually. But genetically modified foods, these are in all of the modern foods, all the modern fast food places. Um, like practically you walk through the grocery store and it's going to be about 70 to 80% of the items in the grocery store are genetically modified. Okay. Backstory, what are genetically modified foods? Well, they are foods that have been engineered to withstand um, temperatures, droughts, um, frosts, insects, just to be able to have it where we can grow food and have good yield consistent, okay? When genetically modified foods were invented, they typically, it wasn't invented necessarily for like a bad thing. What makes them not good for us is the chemicals that go hand in hand to grow those genetically modified foods, okay? 
So for example, about 80 to 90 percent of the wheat, corn, and soy that is grown in the United States is genetically modified. It will not grow well unless you spray Roundup on it, okay? That is a chemical that gets sprayed um, consistently. And in fact, they even spray it more heavily right before they're supposed to harvest. Um, it's just, it's, it's a way that the company that invented um, the Roundup was able to have patents on seeds. And it's, it's a whole nother class, but it's the company Monsanto. They've been around forever. Um, Bayer, which is a medical c company, Bayer Drugs, bought them out. But anyways, Monsanto has been having full control on the world's food population and food crops because of the patents, okay? I'm not making this up. This is something that you can look up on any YouTube channel. Um, and how they got their start back in the, let's see, the 1900s, um, Monsanto, that was, it was named after his wife's last name, they invented saccharin, which is the very first artificial sweetener, which we all use now in, um, like, I think it's like sweet and low. I think that's what it is. Um, anyway, so then they kept creating more chemicals, and they would create, um, I think it was, like, DDT and all the, like, really toxic chemicals that are all outlawed now. One of them was Agent Orange, and I don't know if you guys know the history of Agent Orange, but if you know about the Vietnam War, um, it was sprayed. Agent Orange was a um, chemical warfare drug that was sprayed on the crops in Vietnam that decimated the crops and also created genetic mutations for generations to come, and you can look that up, Agent Orange. And then later on, years and years later, Monsanto invents Roundup, <laughs> okay? Roundup is what's sprayed on all our modern foods, and you're getting more and more links to cancer. You're getting more and more links to people having um, where they cannot handle uh, gluten anymore. You're getting all sorts of digestive issues. And so GMOs must go, right? And so they're on our breads, pastas, cookies, crackers, cereal, um, the dirty dozen, strawberries, raspberries, cherries, peaches, apples. You can look that up, okay? Farmed fish, oils. We do not cook with any um, like modern oils, I guess you could say. We have cut out vegetable oils, canola oils, um, all those really popular ones that you just see for really cheap. Well, they come from genetically modified crops, right? So, you know, we'll do um, organic oils, coconut oil, avocado oil, um, organic butter, organic ghee, okay? The word organic means no chemical sprayed, okay? That's huge. And then on top of that, animals that eat the genetically modified feed, like they're eating the corn, they're eating alfalfa, they're eating soy, they're eating all these things that are heavily sprayed, okay? Because they have to feed the world's population, and I get it, we understand, but there's so many better ways to do farming without putting toxic chemicals in our foods. So I have a couple slides to show you of the most commonly genetically modified foods, okay? And I kind of rattled off a few, um, but it's gonna be your soy, your corn, wheat, cotton, dairy, eggs because of the feed, right? The feed that they give the chickens um, your potatoes, tomatoes, um, farm salmon, because um, it's just runoff. By the way, there's runoff from these chemicals that go into the water supply. So never buy farm salmon. You always want to buy wild caught salmon in the oceans, right? Um, which that's a whole nother story that can have all sorts of mercury issues. But there's companies that will test their fish for that. Okay. Um, our top cereals. So here's a double whammy when it comes to cereal. Not only is it high in sugar and high in refined, simple carbohydrates, they're also, because they are made from grain, 
grain is heavily sprayed, they're the highest amounts of glyphosates found in foods. And guess who gets to eat these all the time? Your kiddos, right? So if you look at that, and I'm not making this up again, you can look this up, Glyph glyphosate foods, um, Cheerios, Wheaties, Trix, um, even the Annie's, okay? Uh, Corn Flakes, Raisin Bran, Kashi, uh, Special K, Cheez-Its, Ritz, Triscuits, Oreos. So all that fun, awesome stuff that our kids love to eat, right? So this is a very good representation of, wow, I might need to change up um, how much genetically modified foods my family is consuming because it is a, it's a, it's a, a game changer. It really can affect your gut. It can affect how much chemical overload is in your system. Um, we weren't made to be consuming that many chemicals on a regular basis. And so it's no wonder people have liver issues and gut issues, okay? And then just a heads up, this is a, a confusion for many people. When it comes to non-GMO and organic, you can get really confused because it can say non-GMO, meaning it's not genetically modified, okay? That doesn't mean it's not still sprayed with chemicals. I hope that makes sense. Genetically modified means that it's been, the seeds have been changed with their DNA to have different um, growth components or weather components to protect it, but that doesn't mean it's not still sprayed, okay? I just want to make that clear. So when you're buying things that says non-GMO, it's even better if it's or not like organic, okay? Because organic means they are not allowed to spray pesticides or herbicides. They have to use other natural farming practices. So I wanted that to be clear for you guys because it's all about marketing and marketing that really gets us. They know the keywords we're all looking for when we're shopping, like low in sugar, heart healthy, um, good fats, whole grain, right? You guys know all those words because, you know, we're taught that, okay, if it sounds healthy, it's got to be healthy. Well, that's why I'm here to educate you. Okay, the third biohack tip, quality sleep. Many people take this for granted. Um, I can see why, because we have so much to get done. And sometimes people think sleep is for the weak. <laughs> um, Sleep is actually for the strong. And if you want to stay strong and have all these health issues, stay away, sleep. And so I will often tell people, you can eat organic, you can do everything perfect, but if you are too stressed out and you're not getting sleep, you might as well just say, I'm just going to burn money, right? Because it's expensive to stay healthy. Sometimes <laughs> it's expensive to, or it's not expensive to stay healthy. If that makes sense, you don't want to be going to the hospital with bills all the time. But my point is we don't want you wasting your hard earned dollars and your efforts by not getting sleep and being stressed out all the time. So quality sleep does mean eight hours. It does mean going to bed at the same time and waking up at the same time. And yes, even on the weekends, if you can do where maybe you give yourself an extra hour you know, you want to be, you don't want to be sleeping until like noon when you're used to waking up at eight, you're going to really throw off the circadian rhythms. Our body loves to be in a rhythm. Okay. Now the sleep wake cycle is very important because once we are ready to go to bed, it's got to be dark. It's got to be where we're like calm. We don't want to be on screens, you know, make sure you're doing all these other things to just calm your system down so that your body makes its own melatonin. If it doesn't make its own melatonin, we all know we won't get that deep sleep. And so then some people become reliant on melatonin, which is not horrible, but long-term you don't want to rely on anything, right? You want to just be able to do things naturally that your body is just adapt to good things, okay? With melatonin, if you find that you are 
reliant on it, then we got to talk and say, hey, well, what are the other factors why you can't give deep sleep? Or you fall asleep, but you wake up in the night and your, your mind is racing. There's other factors that are happening, and it's not necessarily a melatonin deficiency, if that makes sense. Like, that doesn't mean take more melatonin to fall asleep. Actually, more melatonin can become a stimulant, okay? So the amount of melatonin that you should probably be retaking is maybe about one to three grams. And any more than that, you need to be under the direction of a doctor because there's other reasons you would want to take more melatonin, um, but you don't want to be reliant on melatonin, okay? So the point is, if you're not getting sleep, you gotta figure out, are my hormones off? Probably nine times out of 10, if you are a female in your 40s and up, and you are not getting sleep or you're waking up, it's your hormones. Okay, it is your hormones, ladies. <laughs> okay, and then we can talk about how to balance your hormones. I have other classes where if you want to DM me, um, there's so many wonderful testimonies that we get women's hormones balanced, and they're like, I'm sleeping again. This is crazy. It's like, wow, like a dream. It is a dream, right? Um, so you want good sleep, you want to fall asleep, stay asleep. If you're having other issues and you know it's not hormones, let's just say. Um, you have the room too hot, or you have too much noise or too much light. There's a million reasons. And also, as a chiropractor, if you're not getting good body work, your body can't relax and kind of just fall into just the deep sleep because it's fighting pain, right? I think we've all been there. So make sure, well, we're going to talk about that, get body work done consistently if you can, okay? Now, when you wake up in the morning, your cortisol should be a natural, gradual rise, and it should take you about, you know, you should wake up to the sun if you can. If you can't, you can get light, um, light alarms where then your body sees the light, and then it starts to wake you up naturally, and then it usually takes about 10 minutes that you should wake up and start to have good energy to consistently do good things in your day, okay? If you're having cortisol issues, you can get that tested. And that's, usually I get it tested through the Dutch test. Um, and that usually tells me as a practitioner, what's going on with your stress levels? And that tells us a lot. If you're stressed, it throws everything off. And I'm not kidding, it throws everything off, okay? Now, when you're getting good sleep, it activates growth hormones. Growth hormones repair. You need repair to have your body calm down from an inflammatory lifestyle. So if you're not getting good sleep, you're not getting good repair, okay? And so later on, um, or earlier, I had a sleep strategies class. And if you wanna go through my recent posts, it looks like this, and I talk all about sleep, okay? It's really good information because we have to start with good sleep. How you guys doing? <laughs> I go really fast on my classes because I always have so much to share. Okay, my fourth tip for biohacking. Now I have to say this because I'm a chiropractor, but at the same time I've been doing chiropractic for 15 years and the success stories when it comes to doing general, basic body work, putting your hands on people to get all the scar tissue off of them, to relax muscles, to get them back in alignment, to help them with things that are stuck. And it's like, it's probably one of the highlights of my job is when they've been in pain, not that part, the pain for years, but when they've been in pain for years and they come to get adjusted and like, literally it could just take one visit and they their life is epically changed because they are out of chronic pain and they're just like I should have done this sooner people don't put two and two together that body work is huge for your health okay so act like a car you go and get oil changes you go get your tires rotated you get tune-ups Heck, people get their cars detailed inside and out. 
they get it so clean and sparkly. Um, you know, some people put premium gas in their car. You name it, right? People can really treat their car like it's the best thing. But then when it comes to treating their bodies the same, there's a huge disconnect. Like, why would I, why would I do anything for my body <laughs> physically? Okay. So chiropractors, we like to say this motion is life. If you are not moving, you are not living. Okay. And we all know that we feel that we all know when we start exercising or we get that massage or we get that adjustment or we, you know, we get, we stretch and there's just some kind of motion, right? We feel good. We feel amazing. It's like, Oh my goodness, the depression. And like for me, when I get adjusted, like everything's brighter, I can see better. And so it's just this like, wow, I feel good. Okay, here I go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take on my day because I have motion. I have no pain. Okay. Now, when it comes to motion, body work, I'm going to get to that. But walking is probably one of the best things you can do to keep your body moving. Now, when I say exercise, you know, people think, well, I have to start jogging. I have to start, you know, pumping iron. I have to do all these like, you know, workout classes. Well, if you want to do that, go for it. But in general, any age, walking every day is huge. And the number one reason re brings your cortisol levels down and gets your body moving and it gets your lymphatics you know, flowing and it gets your organs kind of pumping. So some people, they have a nice bowel movement after they go for a walk, gets your heart rate at a nice pace, gets the oxygen. You guys, walking is probably one of the best things you can do ever. Okay. Doesn't have to be fancy, right? People think, oh, I have to exercise like a maniac. No, walking. <laughs> Who did that, right? Plus, it gets you out outside and gets you in nature, gets you um, just de-stressing, thinking about good things. I love walking, okay? Strength training, that is my second favorite thing to do. Oh, hold on, I got a book. I've been walking six out of seven days since November, and it's been the best. Yes, Katie, so you agree. It's just, it's like, I don't know, it's like revolutionary, and like it's now with it being more warm in Minnesota, um, it's so fun to see everybody's their just their attitudes and they feel good. It is tougher in the winter months. So in Minnesota, we have where people go and walk malls and they walk um, like indoor domes and whatnot. And then there's some people that are just brave and they walk in the cold. And they just I have this neighbor. She's in her 80s. She is dedicated and she walks in the winter. She just bought special shoes so she doesn't fall. And she has health like an ox, okay? She would do circles around all of us. So the point is she walks. Okay, so strength training is my second favorite thing to do for overall general motion and health. The reason being, as we age, our muscles, the mass, gets smaller and smaller and our muscle tone gets less and less and then that's really hard on our joints our bones will then start to not be as dense and so then for ladies it puts us at risk for bone loss um, it puts you at risk for when you fall bones will break so some sort of resistance or strength training and guess what it doesn't have to be anything crazy. It could be just little dumbbells. It could be um, bands. It could be just like flexing your arms. Something where your muscles contract and kind of just have to, you know, you know, that muscle burn feeling. Um, so also as ladies, as we age, our hormones, they, they can do crazy things. When we strength train, it actually is more beneficial for our hormones versus cardio crazy workouts okay so what the older you get when you do a lot of cardio like intense like i'm talking more than 30 minutes it's actually too much stress on your system and then it creates health issues we don't want high cortisol 
So I typically tell my patients, if you're going to exercise, walking, high intensity interval training, which is like seven to 15 minutes, or strength training. And I tell them they have to stop doing so much cardio. And they're actually, what? Okay. Now, if you already had that lifestyle and you've built up to that, it's a different story. But most people are not doing a ton of cardio in their 40s and beyond. Okay. Now, body work is life. I said, you're, you're, ugh, my, <coughs> I'm going to start over. So body work is life when it comes to um, your tissues, your muscles. It's a living situation. There's cells, okay? And then there's connective things that keep our skin on our muscles, our joints, our ligaments. Things are kind of kept in place by tissue. I have seen it where if you sleep wrong, you fall you do a repetitive thing, let's just say you're doing mouse work over and over and your arms are like this, your body will kind of mold into some restriction scenarios and then you don't realize it and then your body contorts. Body work keeps that at bay. So massage, chiropractic, even acupuncture, stretching, physical therapy, it keeps us so that your body stays limber and that there's no restrictions and that things flow, okay? So those are huge. It's almost like to me, it's like making sure your car has alignment and that the wheels, you know, stay in alignment um, and things get washed. So the point is body work is huge, okay? All right, so you're doing good. We're almost there. We're almost, you know, number five. Okay, I got to find my slides here. Okay. So the last one would be, um, when it comes to health, so many of us are actually afraid to go and get blood work done. And I mean, if I had a dollar for every time a patient was having anxiety or fatigue, um, they couldn't lose weight, uh, what else, pain, like literally every symptom under the sun. And they just like, okay, well, this is what's wrong with me. So I'm going to take these supplements or this is what's wrong with me. Well, that's fine. You want to be proactive on just still trying to like try things to improve your health. It's not until you actually dig deeper and find the actual true underlying cause that you can quit doing the runaround and actually save money. So I've had a patient where she was dealing with anemia and she was having anxiety major fatigue and she was young and you wouldn't think well why should she have any issues she had iron deficient anemia simple right that's a really common one the lab test just revealed she was low on iron okay um, I've had other patients where they're losing their hair they um, they can't seem to lose weight they're constipated um, let's see what else their skin is really dry and there's just like a lot of symptoms. Well, they ended up having a thyroid issue, okay? And the, the, the lab tests that we asked for, um, we asked for a lot more of the thyroid tests than what was typically ran, but it revealed to us what she was dealing with. So then, as a good result, we were able to be very specific, okay, here's what's going on, and we were able to target and be like, it's your thyroid, okay? Um, another patient, blood sugar disease. Um, they were having fatigue, lots of body aches. They were having leg cramps and their hemoglobin A1C was really high. And it was just because they just went in for a general check, but they hadn't been in for a while. Okay. So now we're working with that patient's blood sugar issues. And another patient, <laughs> she was having neck issues and like kind of on her left side. And in her situation, things just were not getting better. So we had to then get a lab test and it turned out her cholesterol was really high and was affecting her heart. And in that situation, she needed to get um, heart help, okay? Autoimmune, vitamin D. In Minnesota, we have so many people who are vitamin D deficient that it starts the process of autoimmunity issues. Um, I've talked about what levels I want people to be at, and I prefer people to be at around 
60, okay? These patients, they're coming in at like 13 or 18, okay? Um, one patient in particular, she was coming and she just kept having chronic joint pain. And she was young, right? It didn't make any sense why she would be having chronic joint pain and she was in her 20s. And so we're like, okay, let's get your lab work done. Vitamin D deficient. Started her on vitamin D, her pain went away, okay? Um, so I just bring these things up. Um, hormone testing is huge. That's another one that I've been doing a lot on with um, patients. So a lot, of, a lot of my hormone patient clients are going to have insomnia, mood disorders, weight issues, um, what else, irritability, you name it. It's health, uh, Hormones are just crazy for us women sometimes, men too, um, but the hormone, touch that it, the hormone test that I do is called the Dutch test, and it tests for estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, cortisol, melatonin, and it gives us a, a picture of like how your body um, is detoxing your hormones and or is your body making these hormones. So then when that happens, we just have to kind of get a, a plan of attack of, okay, we got to support you this way, this way, this way. And then boom, lo and behold, they start feeling better, okay? So that's my fifth uh, tip. And it might seem like a lot to go get blood tests done, but I tell you, it's, it's a game changer because it'll save you years of just wondering what the heck is wrong with you. And if you wanted to know more about what kind of tests to run or have your doctor run, my last class was on understanding lab testing, and I went over the most common lab test to run on yourself that you can typically ask for with your doctor. Otherwise, I gave you um, resources through everlywell.com. And if you go in my bio... I have like a link to save you money, like 15 to 20% off. And they're always randomly running specials. Um, but I, I'll run vitamin D through there. I'll do thyroid tests. And they're at-home tests. So they get mailed to you. You prick your finger. It's blood tests. You put the blood in the little, little circles. Send it off. You get the results. And then they do have doctors that will go over things with you. But I also suggest to find a functional um, nutritionist or your chiropractor or myself. I do do nutrition consulting for labs. Um, and so just have someone walk you through what those numbers mean because they do mean something different to us versus um, the standard medicine. And so specifically thyroid stuff. Um, I look for subclinical issues where your body is heading into that direction versus if you were in the medical doctor's office and you're within the normal, they're not going to do anything about it. But I'm gonna be like, oh, you are pretty close to heading out of normal. We don't like that. So then we know what to do. And then, right. And so then people start feeling better because you can go in and have normal labs and then still like, I, I feel horrible. What's going on with me? Well, because there's nutrition approach and then there's drug approach, right? And then one of the other things, if you were interested in hormones and like the lab testing and all that stuff, I have a class that I did on hormone balancing and I talk more about the Dutch test and like what that looks like. So that's it. It was a quick class tonight. Um, if you are like, wow, she's got a lot of classes that she's recorded and I don't necessarily want to go and sift through everything. I do have everything on my YouTube channel. And apparently I can't find that slide. Hmm. Okay. Oh, there it is. Um, so I have downloaded all these Instagram Live classes. I don't want you guys to miss anything because what I share is like packed information. And if you were to just kind of go through things one at a time, these courses and just kind of re-listen to them or listen to them. I tell you what, it's like it's as if you're having a clinic visit with me on what I would do for you in office. I'm giving you all my information, okay? So don't don't worry if you can't find it on Instagram. 
I do have a YouTube channel that I'm uploading all these classes too. So thank you. Okay, thanks, Tim. Okay, thanks, Laura. Thanks, Katie. You guys are so supportive. I love it. Katie, so sad. Okay. You guys are awesome. Okay, well, we will see you guys in a few weeks.